You may have noticed that when babies come across something new, they don't engage in useless questions. They don't ask, what is this? Does it really exist? They look at it for a bit and they stick it in their mouths. They know the important question is, is this good to eat? And that's an important point to keep in mind, because that's what a lot of life is all about, feeding. The Buddha starts out his questions for the novice. What is one? All beings subsist on food. And that's how you're identified. That's how you create your identity. That's how you define yourself, is how you eat. And so the question is not, are you creating a true identity or are you living a false identity? I.e., the question is not, who are you? The question is, are you eating well? Is the way you eat satisfying? And eating, of course, here doesn't mean just eating physical food. How do you find gratification in the mind? What ideas, what sensory input is really gratifying? And you notice that it's in the course of trying to find gratification in your mental and physical eating that you develop a sense of who you are. And if you find that it's not gratifying, it's not that you've assumed a false identity. It's just you've been eating in the wrong places or eating in the wrong way. So the question is not, who am I, but how am I eating? And if I don't like the way I'm eating, how can I change? And the Buddha has a lot of answers here. The question to, who am I, he just said that's a wrong question. gets you tied up in a tangle of views, a writhing of views, a jungle of views, a thicket of views. And you can never work yourself free. But if you ask yourself, where am I looking for pleasure? Where am I looking for gratification in my life? How do I deal with this hunger I seem to have all the time? Those are worthwhile questions. The Buddha's ultimate answer, of course, is nirvana. When you reach nirvana, there's no more hunger. Total satisfaction. So how do you get to that point of no hunger? You watch the mind to see how it's feeding. Where does it look for gratification? Does it look for gratification in the approval of other people? Does it look for gratification in taking advantage of other people? Or somehow beating them out, proving that you're better than other people? That kind of feeding is junk food. And it's harmful for you, harmful for the environment around you. You want to look for a way of feeding that's totally harmless. It really does give some solid gratification. This is why the Buddha said that the beginning of wisdom is when you ask someone who, who knows what, when I do it, will be to my long-term welfare and happiness. Otherwise, you're going to learn how to feed off your actions, and you try to feed off actions that give long-term gratification, rather than just a, a short, nice burst of flavor in the mouth and then lots of problems when the food gets down into your stomach and intestines.
These are the Buddha's basic answers, generosity, virtue, meditation, a sense of gratification that comes from generosity, realizing that you're able to share, you have enough to share. Even when you're materially poor, you can share your strength, you can share your, your knowledge, you can make a gift of your forgiveness. And the pleasure that comes from that is good, solid food. You're not harming yourself, you're not harming anybody else. And it's the kind of pleasure that when you think back on it, you feel good. You get more pleasure out of it. It's like an investment that keeps, what the, they say, the gift that keeps on giving. It's not like a lot of your sensual pleasures. Once you've consumed them, that's it, and that's all the pleasure you're going to get out of them. Many times they bring pain in their wake. You think about the less than noble things you did in order to get those pleasures, and you feel bad about that. Or if it's a pleasure you have once and you're not going to have it again, then you regret the pleasure. You miss it. So those kinds of pleasures really hurt over the long term. But the act of generosity is something that you can feed on for a long time. Recollection of generosity, recollection of your, the gifts you've given in the past, is actually a, a form of meditation. It's useful for the days when the meditation seems dry. And you begin to wonder if you're ever going to get anywhere with the meditation. You can think back, well, I do have these good things in my background, these good actions that I've developed in the past. And that right there is food for the mind. It strengthens you. It gives you the conviction that you can do this, that you are a worthy person. Virtue is also a form of food for the mind. When you make up your mind that you're not going to harm yourself, you're not going to harm other people. And you stick to that promise that you make to yourself. You look at your actions, there's no reason for regret. And you're creating a zone of safety around yourself. As the Buddha says, the virtue is a type of gift. If you stick to your precepts in all situations, you are giving universal protection to all beings. And you have a share in that universal protection as well. Recollection of your virtue is another form of meditation. It too is food for the mind. You can think back on times when you were tempted to break your precepts and you said no. You realized that you had the opportunity that you could harm somebody, maybe you might get away with it, but you said no. And there's a great sense of self-worth that comes from that. It gives you energy on the path. And then meditation itself is food for the mind. Start out with thoughts of goodwill, spread them to all beings. And it feels good to be able to wish that, realizing that there is a level where your happiness does not have to interfere with anybody else's happiness. You're looking for happiness inside, and you wish that all the beings could find happiness inside. When you think about their good qualities, that gives you energy to develop good qualities yourself. And you feel good about the way you're feeding. You don't have to feed off other people and damage them. You don't have to go into denial that you've damaged them. You don't get tied up by regret. 
You're learning what it means to, to feed blamelessly. Even more so when you get the mind into good solid states of concentration. The Buddha actually compares these two types of food. The first jhana, he says, is like water. The second and third jhanas are like rice and beans. The fourth jhana is like honey, ghee, butter. When you learn how to nourish the mind in this way, you find that the, the feeding is a lot more gratifying. And the question of who am I gets put off to the side. You find that there will be a sense of you that develops around these practices. But that's secondary. You want your main focus should be on the practices themselves and the sense of well being that comes from them. The sense of I am that develops around these. Eventually you're going to have to let that let that go. And you find there are skillful and unskillful identities that you can develop around this kind of eating too. The skillful identity is simply other beings can do this, why can't I? And as you see that you are able to do that, it gives you a sense of self-worth, responsibility, self-respect. The unskillful eye you develop around these, of course, is when you start comparing yourself to other people, saying, I'm better than these people. I've got the first jhana, they don't have any jhanas. As if the jhanas were like baseball cards you could collect. We're not in a feeding contest. If you learn how to f feed skillfully, that, that in and of itself should be gratification enough. So remember the question, who am I? The Buddha said is a useless question. Have I taken on a false identity? Do I have a true identity? Those questions are beside the point. The real question is, how am I feeding right now? And do I feel gratification? Do I feel real satisfaction in the way I feed? If not, are there better ways to feed? Those questions are worth asking, and the Buddha has good answers. But the important thing is that you learn how to make those answers your own.